We have reached 1998, and right knowledge is reaching people all over the world. The Supreme Grand Master, Naya Malachi Zadok York L, is truly setting the record straight. Now listen to these facts, the voice of truth in these last days and times. The Nuwapian Nation of Moors brings you the man of the hour.
<laughs> yeah, them good questions. They've been trying to eliminate the middle for years. You know, they haven't written in their Bible yet, they want to destroy it. They speak about it in the book of Revelation. They know it's coming. They know Jesus is there, but they don't call him Jesus there. One group of beings call him Sananda. Another group of beings call him Tamud. The ancient Hebrews called him Yeshua. The Greeks called him Kyrios. He had various names for him. He's not as important there as he is here to Christians. There he's just another student. Here, he's a son of God. And some even make a mistake of calling him God. Yeah. Unless you have another question, but um, if there's like if the Samaritans call the Talmud and say, and say we got the word Yahshua. Yahshua. Yahshua, sorry. Joshua. You know Joshua in the Bible? Same name. Exact same name. Go ahead. Why is it important for us to get to pronounce the names in the original language rather than saying Jesus? Oh, okay, the reason why we avoid the name of Jesus is because Jesus is a combination put together of the name Jah, which is found in Psalms, which was Jehovah's first part. Is the word Jah or Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahovah, different ways of whether it was uh, Yiddish or Aramic or Sheretic, the different or Chaldean. These are different languages of the Bible. And they were like, they were, I shouldn't even say languages, they are different dialects of the Bible coming from one language. Every time it moves dialect, it changed from Joe to, to what, Jose. The name Joe becomes Jose. Somebody says Tony, and then someone says what, Anthony. You follow that? The same thing, same thing to place with that name. Jah can be found. Jah is the ancient Sumerian word of saying good, right? And, and way is the ancient Sumerian word of saying evil. When they put that together, they got, yeah, it wasn't a J, because there was no J's created in time, it was a Y. It was Yahweh, and it represented a combination of disagreeable and agreeable angelic hosts. Which, by the way, the word angelic host is not even in the Bible. It, it's called angelic army, warriors, because they fought. And if you tell a Christian, the angels actually have a physical fight, they get stuck. The Bible says they have a fight. The angels fought. Well, if an angel, if you get in a fight with somebody, you lose your divinity or your goodness. So the angels originally had a fight. This was a combination of Jah and Wei. You follow? In ancient times, we referred to the deity as Jah. We didn't use Jah Wei. We only used Jah, who was only identifying with the agreeable side. We weren't identifying with the disagreeable side. You also find in the Torah, or Tanakh, as they call it, you find that you use Tov and Ra. And Tov is for agreeableness, and Ra is for disagreeableness. But in the modern day King James, version of the Bible, they made that good and evil too because they set out to confuse people. So the different names came about, the different pronunciations came about from com combining cultures. When the Greeks got in, they used the word Isus, the same word you use for sauce, which is pig, Isus. And that was where their deities called Zeus, who was a pig deity at one time. And they took and put Jah on Zeus when they made a combination with the Roman Catholic Church. See, the Romans were not Christians, but when Constantine took the Roman doctrine and combined it with Christianity and created a Roman Catholic, then they took the doctrine that these people who came from Jerusalem or Philistine brought over there, where they called their deity Jah, and for political reasons, combined it with their god, Zeus, and came up with Jah Zeus, and next thing they would, they would say is Jesus. And when you look in the New Testament under Jesus, you see Jesus. And if you look in the New Testament for Lord, you find Kurios. You don't find the word Lord. The word Kurios has nothing whatsoever to do with Jah or Jehovah as a God. So when Christians are saying Lord Jesus Christ, that is not what's mentioned there. You look in John 14, they're using the word, uh, what do you call it? Kurios, which means sir or master as a term of respect. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the Yahweh or Jehovah of the Old Testament, which is a form of deity. Was, in fact, it was a form of reverence or respect or honor, like you would say to an old man. You would say, excuse me, sir. You follow? And then that word, you can see it, comes back from the word mystic. But the word seer or sight means to be a mystery or something unrecognizable or known. And the older men were known to hold a secret because they were in the sacred brotherhood. So they would refer to them as seer. And the, in the, uh, what do they call it? In the Seretic, that word seer became ass, like a mule. 
and it identifies with the story of Balaam and the ass, and the secret that the ass would not reveal. You follow me? Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's links to all of that crap they made up in the Bible. Somebody else? But that's somebody got the mic, so right up, they gave me a mic so I didn't have to yell. Look at them dance, right? Well, you want to turn that? This, this is uh, another question about Nibiru. Uh, Knowing that the bear was the size of uh, Jupiter, uh, how the bear can be larger than Jupiter. The can be smaller. The bear travels as a cube. The only time the bear gives off the impression of an orb is when it defends puts up its four wings to defend itself and it starts to rotate. So there's nothing that can come within a certain radius of it. Then it gives off an orb effect, but it's actually a cube. Uh, also, knowing uh, that. The size of the wrist had to be bigger. I was wondering, was there another Nibiru monster going another galaxy besides this one? That's not what it says. It says that they constructed crafts on other planets. That's what that's what's happening right now on this planet. They're actually sending up satellites. They're sending up crafts with portions to put a space station out there that will be larger than the planet Earth, so that they can transport their people out of here. They are trying to get out of here because nature or Neptune is destroying this planet. They have overworked the planet, overexhausted the planet, pulled, they pull the natural resources and minerals out of the planet. It keeps it on. In other words, this planet is a living entity. You keep pulling the oil out of it and burning the oil and exhausting it in, in cars and, and also in uh, what's called ions in the air and then fusing the ions in the air and destroying the ozone layer and then it's a, the ultraviolet ray what we call magnified or magnetized the eons which is the fine uh, medical particles that come out of chimneys and you all to the whole equilibrium of the planet. So the planet is on a destiny to destroy itself thanks to the Luciferians. And now what they're doing is trying to get out of here. And they plan to leave everybody here. And they teach that in Christianity. That's their rapture. The rapture that they're talking about in Christianity when they went around the church saying, please, Jesus, come. They're talking about Lucifer. That's why they call Jesus the might, the, uh, the morning star. They're not talking about the Father, they're talking about Lucifer himself. They try to make Jesus as God because their God is the devil. And they're trying to get out of here. They're telling you, in your churches, we should clap our hands and sing because one day Jesus is coming to get up. Is that what they teach? They say that Jesus will come, the good ship Jesus, and God is going to rapture us up and take us into heaven. Ain't that what it says? Well, go to Matthew. And start with our Father right now. What do you read? Our Father, who art in heaven. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Where? Where? Now why would Jesus say in Matthew 6, pray after this, man, that the kingdom of God is coming down to earth. Right? Just as it is in heaven. Meanwhile, the preacher's telling you, let's get off the earth. You hear me? The reverend, the pastor, and the preacher, they're saying, we got to wait for that good ship to take us out of here. Meanwhile, your Bible that you read every day is saying just the opposite. It's saying that God's kingdom is coming to earth. I just go up there over that Bible to Revelation 20, where I do it all the time, and read it, and it'll tell you, I'll do it, make it easy. But I know how, how difficult it is.
And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more seas. And there were no more seas. So now, where are we at? Are we on heaven or are we on earth? If we look up into the heavens, this Bible that you say you believe in, in the chapter of the same King James Version, Revelation 21, write it down, go home and read it, and read it to your pastor, pass it on. It tells you, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth are what? Passed away. It's not going to be here, they said. But now check on. And I, John, saw the holy city and the new children coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Now this relates back to Matthew. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Here it says, and John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, called Sion, Zion, the new one, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God. If you go to Revelation 9, they say, Everybody get in the tabernacle. Because those who are outside the court of the tabernacle, what? They will not be counted. They're giving themselves over to the courtyard. The Hebrew word meaning a Gentile or a beast or a savage person. It says in the book, here it says, heaven saying, behold, look, behold, the tabernacle of Theos, the Greek word they use, for the plural of Elo, Elohim, or Elohim. Now it's telling you to look up at a certain time, and you're going to see a whole city. And that city is going to have who? Theos in it. Jesus in it. Listen. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he, what, will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Christians are saying, Jesus will be your God. Christians are saying, Jesus will be with you then. Your Bible is not saying that. You should want to know why are you being lied to? Why is the preacher trying not to say what the Bible says? You follow me? Why are you being this here? Now how we some know. And God shall wipe away the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. The emotions of this world will even be gone. The sufferings of this world will, it will be gone. Because you will be in the presence of God, where there can't be suffering and pain. Not in the presence of Jesus. It's not what it says. And I'll go on. And it tells you in this book, don't add to it and don't take away from it. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and them are books. This is not the Revelation. This book says, going back to Revelation chapter 1 of it, it starts off, the Revelation of Jesus. Not the Revelation of John. Not the Revelation of Paul. Not the Revelation of Mark. Not the Revelation of Luke. But this says, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. It's so curious. Yeah. Christos, not in Christos, Christos in this case. What does it say? Which God gave unto him. Now, think of me. Is Jesus God? No. Come on, Christian, you sitting up in here front. <laughs> is Jesus God? Defend your faith now. Is Jesus God? According to the Bible, it says that God gave Jesus the revelation. Is that what I just read? This is your Bible. Read it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Whose servants are they? God's servants. He gave Jesus the revelation to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. 
and he sensed it and he signified it by his angels. Correct? Christians ain't teaching that. So when you link that back to Revelation 21, when it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is a man, and he will and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Are we talking about Jesus? Or are we talking about his father? I'll go back to the Bible and show you what Jesus tells you. That he is merely a path to the Father. Whoever's teaching you to want to get out of here before the kingdom comes, whoever's teaching you to look for Jesus and not his father, whoever's setting up churches and got you following Paul and other people, that is the Luciferian. And that's what Jesus warned you about in Matthew 24 when he said, many will come in my name and say, I am Christ. Not many are going to come in my name and say, they are Christ. Many are going to come in my name and say, I am Christ. These people are calling themselves Christians. They're not real Christians. Jesus is going to tell them, I never knew you. They're going to say, but didn't we perform miracles and heal in your name? Yeah, they lay on hands. Yeah, they can give you the Holy Ghost. Yeah, they can make the blind, they can make crippled people walk by touching them. That don't make it from God. Doesn't it tell you that in this same book of Matthew, the devil's going to have such power that if it was possible, he would fool the very elite? The devil has powers too. The devil was back there in the garden before Adam and Eve. If the Pharaohs were the bad guys, you hear me? And the Israelites were the good guys, like I said many times, when Moses' brother Aaron turned his staff into a snake, the Pharaoh's people did the same thing, so they must have had the same kind of magic. You hear me? So the Christian preachers laying on hands today said, well, I, someone told one sister close to my heart, told me, I felt the spark. I said, yeah, you walk around on the road long enough and touch the person, you get what's called static electricity. That's one of the reasons why them preachers be storming up and down the road and doing all this kind of stuff. They're feeling static electricity. Then when they walk up and touch you, you do feel the spark, but you're in that place sweating, sweating, electricity, drugs, charge, static, spark, got the Holy Ghost.
He took a man, walked around, preaching you, walked around, and everything, and then you dump money, and he beat it in it, and you dump money, passing out plates. The con. Go to church and say, well, well, I had a vision last night. God told me to tell everybody in here that he got our back. That we don't have to put no more money in this here church. Not one cent. But God got our back, Rev. That's what he told me last night. Right, Rev? Is it possible, Rev, that God could have spoke to me last night and spoke to my heart, Rev, and told me, don't put no more money in there because I got your back. God telling me <laughs> that we're near the end of the world. Any day now, son, the world is going to end. Any day now, son, it's over. So why are we donating? Shouldn't we be sitting and waiting? Shouldn't every pulpit in every church be the lesson of the end? Don't talk about the beginning. Don't talk about the future. Talk about the end. Because that's what y'all say is near. And every time I want y'all to know that end is near. <laughs> Jesus is right around the corner. In fact, I feel him right now. He's still alive. I can feel him touching my humble, humble, blumber, blumber. Speaking tongues. Crap. Then you ain't speaking no tongues, you're a deceiver. And, and the real Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, told us to watch out for people like you. You know what happened? We let go somewhere along the line and became desperate. We became desperate for affection. We wanted to cop out from reality. We couldn't face our failures. So it's convenient for me to go to church and say everything is going to be all right. Say it. Everything is going to be all right. Because God got the whole world in his hands. Right. But I got these bills to pay. I got car notes and gasoline. You understand? And food and school notes. And, and I want God to help me with this. Because God knows gold. And if God knows gold and God knows my soul, then God knows my soul and know I need some gold. <laughs> to help us get up out of this mess. You follow what I'm saying? But until you do, I ask you, why would you give the Arabs, listen, why would you give the Arabs oil, right? Because God gives oil. The Arabs could not have found no oil if God didn't put it there. Do we agree with that? Yes. Now they dug a hole in God's good old earth. And when they got to a certain point, bam, they hit oil. And God made the temperament and the minds of the people on the planet Earth for this day and time that oil is valuable. It didn't have to be because he could not, he could have made a man where man didn't have the intelligence to make cars so he wouldn't need petrol. But God, because you said he controls everything. God gave man the mind to create the car, to design the car to use gasoline or petrol. Yes or no? And that same God is the one who has given the bus to your church. Yes or no? And that God gave a car to everybody in the church that could afford a car. Yes or no? That God created oil to put in the car, otherwise your ass wouldn't get to church. And the bus wouldn't get to the picnic. You be standing in no man's land, yes or no? All right, so let's start again. Why is there oil in Arabia and not in Rome with the Pope? Why would God make the Arabs, who are rock-worshipping, barbaric, ass-backward savages, I mean, rock-worshipping idiots, I've been to Mecca. I've watched people run around a building and don't know why. There's a difference when you understand the ancient Egyptian tradition and you understand what you're doing over there, that when you go to Mecca and you ask a Muslim, why are we running around the Kaaba? They say, Sunnah, Sunnah Rasulullah, alayhi salatu wa salam. Nice word, meaning tradition of the, me the messenger of Allah. I didn't ask you, who told you to do it? I ask you, why are we doing it? Why are we prostrating on the ground? Well, we're prostrating on the ground and salah to Allah, worship. That's not what I mean. I mean, why? You say, well, because it's good for our soul. Why? 
Well, it's a sign of discipline. Says, Does God know our soul? Does God know what's in our soul? Does God know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Does He know what's in your heart? The answer is, now. Who you are He knows all things. That's in their language. In Arabic. Yes, He knows all things. According to them. So if God already knows what's in your heart, tell me why you got to pray. If God already knows your intentions, then God knew that Jeffrey Dahmer intended to kill these those people. And Ted Bundy, he knew they were going to do that. God knew that. And still let them go do it. Tell me why. God couldn't control the minds of the Vietnamese and the Americans so it wasn't a Vietnam War that made these uh, mothers have uh, sons die, husbands die by the thousands for political bullcrap. Could God have altered that? Could God have changed that? Yes, if there was one. Or yes, if there was one like you called him. I'll go back around. I'll get back to this, but I want to say, I want you to think. Why did your God give the Arabs the oil to make them rich enough for the Pakistani Muslims to be tested nuclear weapons after the so-called arms war is over? What can an arms war do to the planet Earth, y'all? One arms war, what can it do? Now let's check the mentality of this. What is considered the strongest country in the world? USO. And what is the religion of the U.S. of A? Now, what are the religion of the Hindus? Huh? And what is the religion of the Pakistanis? So now, you've got people who are Hindu and people who are Muslim with the power in their hands to destroy the world given to them by God. Right now, while we're talking, they have a big thing that's rolling because India tested nuclear weapons on the border of Pakistan and Pakistan retaliated even though the United States government told them they better not. They did it already. After America said, don't do it, they did it. You hear me? Why did God let that happen? Why, if we're such good Christians and we're so close to God and we're the best place in the world, why did God let that happen? You know what happens when you do that? People get mad at you. They don't want you to question that. Somebody on the street, I mean somebody, the body 
of the child, attacks the child, heart murmurs, the child dies. You turn to heaven and you say, God, why my child? God says, you selfish back. Because of the word mine. All right, then why children? And that's the kind of questions I ask. That's peeling the skin. You follow what I'm saying? Off the God concept and getting the essence of it. Why babies are dying? If we went into the Bible of Genesis of the story of the flood, where God literally says they repented him because of the evil that he had created in the heart of man. He created man and he created the devil. Is that not true? According to your Bible. So if God created man and God created the devil, then the evil acts of man is coming from this creature that God created called the And God repented and said it hurt him in his heart, but man's thoughts was evil continuously. So he's going to do what? So he's going to drown him. Very sophisticated approach for a God who can simply go, and it's all over. Does he have to drown you? Now, because you're on the other side of the ark, you're on the other side of the Noah story, you're not really looking at it. Let's go back to the baby again. Let's go back to the couple in Noah's time who just had their baby. Right? And now it starts to rain. And rain. And rain. And rain according to them. And the earth splits open and waters gush up and the dams break. And people are running to and fro and screaming and drowning and God, that's cruel. Have you ever seen somebody drown? How their body discolorates and pumps up and floats and floats? That's the best your God could have done. I thought that he was in control of mind. Wouldn't a change of mind have changed the condition? Think before you answer. If God is in control of the mental state of all things, wouldn't a mere change of mind change all the conditions to better? Where was this disconnection with God at? Where he had to say to himself, it hurts me to my heart because man is evil. How did he get that far with God? Right in your Bible. So I guess I'm going to drown everybody. Then he obviously gets upset because he says, I'm going to drown every man. Then he says, every creeping thing, every beast, and every fowl of the air. He's not only mad at man, now he's drowning everything. But according to your Bible, he's only mad at man because man's actions are evil. So why are the birds? And don't tell me animals don't have feelings because you niggas got pets. And you play with your dog and you talk to your dog and you play with your cat and you talk to your cat and you say, you know, that cat's thinking. That's a smart cat there, my cat is. <laughs> Be without birds, the birds talk to you. That means they have a voice box and thinking ability, articulation. Right? Why did they have to drown? Tell me, what did they do in your body? Why did God kill them also? You know what some crazy preacher would tell you? Well, oh, they were created for you. Then why were birds here before you? They don't have answers to these questions. They don't want to strip back the pill and the deal directly with God. They want to deal in faith. They want to deal in belief. They want to deal in fiction. They want to deal in facts. And when you try to go at them with the facts, and they knew this was coming, they should have never snatched your ass out of Africa and locked you over in this country and brainwashed you. They should have knew one day it was going to come back. They should have knew it was going to stir inside of us as God to stand up and bring the truth to life. And it started with Elijah, started with different teachers along the way, and each one of them added a little bit, and he got stronger and stronger and stronger, and now they're confronted with people that say, tell us why this. And they got a whole bunch of flunkies 
Just run around saying, well, Lord Jesus Christ is coming and he's your friend and Savior, and I don't hear nothing else to say. You see, you don't understand this because you ain't saved. If you had the Holy Ghost, you would know this. So you got, you got the Holy Ghost, nigga, where's that? And what does it do exactly for you? The Holy Ghost. Tell me exactly what, what it does. It means I'm a good person. There are people living in the villages of Uganda, in Africa, that have never committed what you call a sin because they never had the opportunity because they shit there for some trees. Do they have the Holy Ghost too? Are they going to heaven? Then you start to have to become inclusive. Well, yeah. If, uh, if Jimmy Swagger going to heaven, even though he committed a sin and he repented, well, repentance is for your sins in the Bible. Yeah, but he was preaching the word of God. Can you go to heaven? He deceived God and God's congregation. They'll start to literally lie before they start unmasking the truth. So there it says, And he sat upon the throne, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Last book of your Bible. All things new. Now, what are we doing right now? Huh? We're making all things new. It's a new gospel. Because it's a new day and time. It's a new word. There's a new spirit on the moon. The spirit of truth. Not the spirit of faith. Not the spirit of fiction. Not the spirit of fantasy. But the spirit of truth. And when you say to them, is that true? You go, uh, this is true. Oh yeah, Revelation, let me go somewhere. I'm going to jump around with it. Y'all mind, y'all? Let me see. John, yeah, that's John. Okay, John found me. Listen to this here. And you got a John 14. This brother was using John 14, so let's go there. Now, take just this verse, John 14, verse 1. Not that I'm afraid to go to the whole thing. I will go, I'll walk with you, you know me. Step by step, word by word, Greek, Aramic, wherever you want to go. But let's just take this one statement. And let's take this statement alone to the pastor. I don't mean to him in a, in a private chamber. That's their special game. When you stick them in the church, they come on in the private chambers and talk to them. They don't want you to talk to them in the congregation. But they don't want them public to see you tear them up. Listen to this. Anybody got, anybody got Bibles out there? Because I don't want to be the only one with one. All right, listen. It starts off in the chapter 13, in the 37th verse, Jesus answered him. He says, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Jesus said, Will you die for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the clock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. And they make it look like that's where it stops. But the verse continued because the original Bible didn't have chapters and verses in it. It was in scrolls, and they admit the Dead Sea Scrolls are scrolls. But now they give you the chapters and verses, and it can make you think because that was a period that Jesus stopped talking. But the red print continues straight on to 14. The only thing black there is number 14. If they had moved to number 14, he would have said, has denied me thrice. And then said, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is saying, ye believe in God. You hear me? Believe also in me. What did I just say? He said, ye believe in God. Right? Well, you all say, I'll read it. Let's do it. It says, um, let, not, let not your heart be troubled. Come on, y'all. Let not, I want you to think about that. Let not your heart be, so don't worry. Ye believe, Ye believe. in God. In God. Believe, believe also, also. In, me. in me. 
Isn't that beautiful? Except for the fact that it stomps the hell out of Christianity. Because of the term, the very word, also. If Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, then he wouldn't say, if you believe in God, believe in me also. Because if they were one and the same, you only have to say, if you believe in God, then you believed in me also. You follow that? Now the quote that they always use is following this. A little further down, it says, in my father's house, not in my house, in my father's house. Where is his Abba? According to him in Matthew. Abba, our father who are in Jesus is now on earth, be planted by gravity and liberty and making a statement in my father's house. So that's out there, not here. You hear me? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That's that beautiful. And whether I go, ye know, now listen to this, and the way you know, and where I'm going, you know, he said. And the way I'm going to go, you know. There's a statement Jesus is making to his disciples, right? Here's how they answer him. Thomas said unto him, Curio, sir, not Lord like in God, Curio, sir, we know not whether thou goest. Stop. Jesus just said to them, you do know where I'm going, and you do know how I'm going, right? Thomas just said to Jesus, no, we don't. Now I ask you a question. Does Jesus know what's in my heart? Does Jesus know what's in every man's head? Obviously not. Because he said, y'all know where I'm going, and y'all know how I'm going, and then Thomas said, no, we don't. He disagreed with God by your Christian concept. He verified that Jesus does not know what's going on inside the disciples' heads. You understand the simple things? Because this is peeling the crap away to get to the essence of God. The real God. You might go, go and get the essence of God. No, I ain't finished beating up the Christians. Let me finish first. They've been beating up everybody else for years. It's their turn. That crap. And how can we know the way? They're telling Jesus, we don't know. And how can we know? And Jesus just said, y'all do know. And y'all know the way. Bad connection, isn't it? Walk with me. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Now he has to teach it to him. He just said they already knew it. Verify they didn't know it, now he's going to have to show them. What? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. We're going to say, no man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. What did he mean? That the Father who art in heaven and in, in whom house there are many mansions, right? Jesus said you cannot get to the house or one of those mansions, I'm going to pray a place. You will not get there to that Father except you come by way of me. Would that make him the Father? No. Plain, simple English. Does that make him the Father? No, it makes it very clear that you can, I will come to me and I'll take you in the house and talk to my father. You know where that story is at? It's in the Bible. Who is it? Isaac, Jacob, Esau. Remember that story where Rebecca 
is going to deceive Isaac and get Esau's birthright. So she tells Jacob what to do, and she takes Jacob into the father, and Esau gets the blessing. I mean, I'm sorry. And Jacob gets Esau's blessing. Same story. I am the way. I'll take you in the father's room. If you want to go to the movie, I'm even good with that. You go in there, you're going to be sent to the room to clean the room off. I'll get this going in. Uh, uh, Dad, yeah. can I take Johnny to the movie? All right, you make sure you bring him back. Got it. That's all this story is. Go get deeper for y'all who got lost in there. Take, if ye had known me, this is Jesus, ye should have, ye should. Because they said, if you know me, you know the Father. That's what I'm trying to say. That's not what the Bible says. He doesn't say if you know me, you know the problem. Read, this one says, if he had known me, he should have known my father. You see the difference? If you know me, you know the father. That's where the reverend runs it down. He takes out the most important word. Should. If you know me, you should have known my father. That don't mean he is the father. Now watch. And if I, I left out also, no, my father also, also again, also, me and him, also. You hear me? And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. He says, see, there it is, right there. He said, when the disciples looking at Jesus, they looking at the Father. That's not what he said. He said, from now on, not from last week when you was with me, because from now on implies that it's a new incident. You know what this had it meant previously, the only time he was walking with them, he wouldn't have said, from henceforth you'll see him. You understand what I mean? It's the little word game they're playing. And we who are the true followers of the true Christ, the true Savior. We got a job to do. We got to fight the Antichrist. We got to fight the fake preachers and the fake teachers in that crap. We got to use the word as it's written, without alteration, without tampering, without hype. Go into the languages. When I teach y'all, I broke up the scriptures and translated for you from Greek and Arabic and Hebrew. So you can see it yourself, every word, and investigate and put a man in check. Oh, you didn't know we were the true followers of Christ, I see. I guess this is new information, huh? You didn't know Michael. Let me go back there. I thought y'all was with me on this. I see shock in your faces. I didn't know Doc was a Christian. Well, now, let me surprise you. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and he signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Michael is a warring angel, the protecting angel. The word Michael means who dares go against God. And when I came on the scene, I said I'm the incarnation of the angel Michael, not Jesus. I am not Jesus, don't run that crap on me. I am a forerunner, a preparer. I am a warrior, a sword bearer to take the heads of liars. <laughs> I am here simply to set the record straight. You may not like what I have to say, you may not like me, but I've been fighting the devil before your ancestors' ancestors were born. And I whipped his ass before, and I'll whip it again. 